red wine beef stew, also known as beef bourguignon. This is my version. It is rich. It is hearty. The meat is so tender. I make this pretty much every other weekend without a doubt. This consists of nine main ingredients. So we're gonna start off with whole carrots that have been washed. I keep the peel on, cut these carrots in half lengthwise and then cut them into half moon shapes, about half an inch thick or so. Next, I have a couple ounces of cremini mushrooms. Using a pastry brush to get rid of any excess dirt, no rinsing underwater necessary. Slice these uniformly, about quarter inch in thickness, put them in a bowl, set them aside. Pearl onions, whack off both ends, cut off that outer paper layer. There you have it. I have about 20 of them because they're super tiny. Five whole garlic cloves with the paper removed. Eight slices of bacon cut in half and cut those halves into nice julienne strips. I go a little heavier on the bacon because I just love the richness that it gives to this beef stew, okay? Now we have a two pound beef chuck roast. I'm trimming off any kind of chewy, fatty parts that I don't like. I'm cutting the meat up into about one inch cubes, trying to keep them uniform in size. That way it just all looks really nice when you have it in a bowl and it fits nicely on that fork, all right? Chuck roast works perfectly for this beef stew because I love the marbling on it and the fat to meat ratio is about 20% fat, 80% meat. All right, Dutch oven, heated over medium high heat, and I have it heated up until it's literally smoking. One tablespoon of oil goes in, toss in half the amount of that cut up beef chuck into that hot Dutch oven, all right? We're gonna brown this on all sides, keeping all of that fat that's running out and keeping it into that Dutch oven. We do this in batches because I want a nice, beautiful caramelized crust on the outside of it. Toss in that second batch. Notice I have not salted this meat yet either because I wanna have that beautiful caramelized outside of it, all right? Bacon goes in next. Just kind of cook this for about two to three minutes, rending around that fat until it starts to just barely start to crispen up, all right? Once it does start to crispen up, pull that bacon out of that Dutch oven and just set it aside, okay? We're gonna keep about half of the amount of oil for now. We're gonna toss in those carrots. We're gonna toss in those pearl onions. We're gonna toss in those garlic cloves. Now we salt it because the salt will pull out that beautiful natural sweetness that the onions have, that the carrots have, that the garlic have, okay? Do this for two to three minutes until it starts to slightly caramelize on the outside of it. Slotted spoon, scoop it out of the Dutch oven, set it aside once again, all right? Put that meat back into the Dutch oven now, okay? Now we hit the meat with the salt, hit it with some pepper, hit it with two tablespoons of AP flour. We're gonna cook the rawness off of that flour two to three minutes, stirring the meat constantly in all of that beautiful rendered down fat from the bacon and that chuck. Now, traditionally in a beef bringer yon, you'd use a Chianti, you'd use a Beaujolais. I like this Cabernet Sauvignon for this, okay? My personal preference, my stew, my way. Deglaze the oven with about a quarter cup worth of that red wine at first, all right? We're gonna scrape up all those beautiful brown goodies from the bottom of that pan while stirring in a quarter cup of tomato paste. We're gonna melt the tomato paste in, reduce that wine a little bit, giving all those beautiful caramelized bits from the bottom of that Dutch oven like I just said, all right? Now we're gonna go in with the carrots, the onions, the garlic, and that rendered out bacon. Now we're gonna go in with a glass worth of that red wine, two cups of beef stock, now we're gonna just stir it, see where we're at, see if we need more liquid. Add an additional cup if you need of that beef stock. That is three cups of beef stock in total. Continually stir it gently. Now we're gonna bring this up to a boil, kill the heat, put a lid on it, chuck it in the oven, 325, and that's gonna go for about four hours. Halfway through that time frame, I'm gonna toss in a few sprigs of fresh thyme, all right? The last 30 minutes of that stew cooking off, I like to cook the mushrooms down. We're gonna heat up a saute pan over high heat, hit the pan with two tablespoons of oil, and throw in your mushrooms. I'm showing you that this is a very much an overcrowded pan, so we wanna cook these mushrooms in batches, all right? I do two batches for this, okay? Fresh thyme is gonna get picked in, and then I'm just kinda saute these over high heat, flipping them every once in a while, making sure that they're, you know, not sticking to that pan. If you have a hot enough pan, enough oil, they're not gonna stick. Once the mushrooms do start to caramelize, I throw in one tablespoon of unsalted butter. Notice I have not salted the mushrooms yet. I'm just extracting that natural moisture out of the mushroom. Then that's when I add the butter, and those mushrooms kinda suck up that beautiful flavor that the butter has, all right? Flavoring the mushrooms just immensely. Keep sauteing them and just flipping them around. Make sure that you're cooking them evenly. Once they do start to caramelize and they're almost all the way done, I zest in one clove of garlic. Keep tossing them and just flipping them around and sauteing them, cooking that garlic for another 30 seconds or so. Now we're gonna just set those aside and get the pan ready for the next batch of mushrooms. So the next batch I toss in one tablespoon of butter, there's already enough oil on that pan. Once again, these are gonna get sauteed for two to three minutes until they get fully cooked and beautifully caramelized. 
Is he gonna just get cooked down the same way as the other, okay? Couple of leaves of fresh thyme gets tossed in there to saute these for that two to three minutes until they are beautifully caramelized and cooked all the way through. Zest in that one more clove of garlic. Other batch of the mushrooms are gonna go into the pan and deglaze that pan with about a quarter cup of that same red wine that we used in that beef stew. Gently toss the mushrooms around in that wine so that they get fully absorbed and just let it simmer for about 30 seconds. And now you want to hit with some black pepper. Now you want to hit with some salt. Kill the heat, set it aside. By now your beef stew should be perfectly done, all right? I'm checking the consistency of the sauce, making sure it's to a thickness that I like. I mean, you could always strain it and thicken the sauce up in a different pot if you want to. Add the mushrooms to the stew, gently fold it in, and pull out your favorite bowl. Give yourself a big heaping amount of that. You have tender beef, you have bacon, you have a rich red wine sauce in this stew. Ton of other flavors, very, very rich, very, very developed. You are going to love this stew. A perfect companion is freshly baked off garlic bread. This stew really hits a spot, especially on those cold wintry days like we've been having lately. For another rich and hearty dinner idea, click that recipe card that you're seeing on the screen and I will see you there.